Hi, welcome everyone. It's Chris Petrie. We're doing some really fantastic watercolor paintings here. This is an Extreme Beginners series video. So this is for the beginners. We're actually going to create two beautiful paintings. We have here the second painting we're going to do is a beautiful ocean scene, seascape with some figures on the beach. Um, we're going to use the paintings from my book. We're going to show you how you can take paintings from a book, clip them out, trace them and use them. And then the first painting we did was our uh, flower painting, which we uh, as well, we took this from my book. We just clipped this out, took a pair of scissors, cut out um, our painting from our book. And then we used our clear plastic clipboard. And we show you how you put your original uh, painting or photograph, whatever you're going to use. You put that onto your clipboard and then you put your watercolor paper over the top and you trace over the original and then you have a beautiful completed sketch and then you you continue to paint on from there so we're going to cover all these details in this video i'm glad you're here joining along with us we're going to have a lot of fun we have um plenty of videos on extreme beginners so that if you're just starting out you don't have to worry you'll have plenty of great uh videos and tutorials on my channel you can go back all you have to do is type in extreme beginners and you'll see all of my, of my videos. I probably have a hundred uh, Extreme Beginner videos for over the last year or two that we've been doing them. So you'll have plenty to work with. And then if you subscribe below, please subscribe. You'll be in tune with us as we're, you'll be, uh, you know, seeing all the videos coming out and you'll be alerted that the new videos are coming in each week and you'll be able to follow along too and uh, work with us uh, right at the present moment that we're working now um, this each week uh, as we go forward. Okay, so we have two great paintings compositions we're going to do. We'll show you every bit of details that you need to get these completed and uh, in a really fun way so that you enjoy the watercolor journey. So we'll get started in just a second. All right, welcome everyone. We just saw the finished paintings we just created. This is an Extreme Beginner series video. So now we're just going to kind of go over the uh, methods and techniques and steps we're going to take to be able to get to those finished paintings and why I'm going to explain why this is a great method of working with your watercolors, especially if you're just starting out. So if you're just here for the first time, you're at the perfect right place at the right time uh, for learning how to paint watercolor. And then secondly, um, even if you've been painting for a while and maybe you need a new way of a new approach of painting watercolor, then you're again at the perfect place at the uh, right time. So let's get right into it here. So what I wanted to mention was you'll just need a very, very, limited amount of art supplies to start with. So I'm going to go over those right now. The first thing I was going to kind of just mention is the palette that I use, the Prang Oval 16 set, extremely affordable, great paints. All you have to do is really use a water spritzer bottle. And if you spritz these paints just a little bit, they become activated and you're able to work immediately. So there's no waiting time or anything like that. When you're done with this palette, when you're done painting for the day, for the session that you're working, you just close the palette and that's it. And then the next time, the next day or the next evening or the next week, you're going to pick back up again. You just open it up, spritz a little bit of uh, water onto it, fresh clean water onto your paints and they're ready to go. So this is a great palette for beginners. I would say this is just the ultimate. So we have this palette and this palette incidentally does come in different shapes. Like you can get the rectangular paint wells. I happen to always purchase the ovals, but you can buy the um, rectangular shapes. But the main thing is the 16 colors. You want to have the 16 colors. And I did rearrange these colors in my palette. So you can check out my video. Um, you just type in Chris Petrie Prang oval 16 palette. And I'll show you in that video. You just research that video, type it into YouTube into the search bar at the top of YouTube, you just type in Chris Petri, C-H-R-I-S space P-E-T-R-I space oval, O-V-A-L space 16 space palette, P-A-L-E-T-T-E -T -T -E, palette. And you'll see my video pop up and that'll show you how you can rearrange your colors in your palette just the way I have them. Because there's really an importance to setting up your palette and keeping your colors in the same place every time when you're opening up your palette you want the colors in the same location every time so when you run out of paints and you buy a new palette like this you're going to take all the colors out and pop them back in in this exact same order and it's really easy to do simple in that video you'll see it 
So we have our Prime Oval 16 set. The second thing is a spritzer bottle. You can get the Holbein spritzer bottle. And I think all these art mater materials here and supplies are in the uh, description box below. You might have to click on the word more for more information. And then you'll see all of the links to uh, Amazon. And Amazon usually has all of my art supplies that I personally use. And that's the links below are all the materials and art supplies that I use personally that I know are excellent. So you'll never go wrong if you're purchasing those. But you can also shop around on Amazon to get a little better pricing or if you want different colors and, you know, and so forth on things or, uh, you know, different uh, shapes of brushes and whatever else. You can figure that out. But uh, just wanted to mention that. So Holbein spritzer bottle, that's how we spritz our paints to get them a little moist as we go. And then, of course, the Prangle 16 set does come with a brush and it's a wonderful brush. This round brush, it's mostly for smaller paintings. So if you're going to paint a little bit larger, well, you're going to probably pick up a little bit larger of a round brush here. And I have this Simply Simmons number no. nine round brush. You can see it's a little larger. And then there's other brushes we'll have below in the uh, links in the description below. You'll see I have the um, Princeton Art and Brush Company set. You can buy a very, very inexpensive set. All, incidentally, all of these art supplies here are very inexpensive. So you can start off really with watercolor painting in the beginning and, and welcome if you're, it's your first time here um, on my channel um, you can you can really spend very very minimal uh, you know a very very um, humble amount of m money to get in you know to invest in art supplies and you'll be ready set and and, and going with watercolors so again um, this brush does come with the set so you'll have a brush and your paints and if you want to upgrade and get a few extra brushes Synthetic brushes, watercolor brushes, you can do that. So we have those. Again, tissues, everyone has these, but I use these a lot, tissues, so you'll have tissues on hand, those are easy. Same thing here, scotch tape, you probably have this at your house. Um, I like to use this rubber um, water container, collapsible water container. It's more quiet. I've been uh, noticing that I should shift over to a rubber um, uh, water container because my, my plastic ones make a lot of noise when I'm painting and, and it probably just you know makes like an unpleasant noise when I'm painting I apologize for that for those of you that have been putting up with that for years um, but this is a little bit better less noisy when I'm tapping on my um, my water container when I'm working so this will be better for my videos going forward and then uh, what else do we have here we have um, we have the um, clear transparent um, a clipboard so if you can purchase one of these these are absolutely phenomenal because we're going to show you here on this video how you're going to trace some really cool interesting paintings using this clear um, clipboard it's really a great investment and it's not expensive at all and the last thing I noticed notice here on our table this is it this is the last thing we need I would say purchase two of my books methods for success watercolor I've just created this book in the last uh, year or so um, I think if you buy two of these, you're going to be all set. One, you can keep for reference uh, when you're painting and drawing and painting in watercolor. And also you can leave it on your coffee table too. So it's like a nice conversation piece when people maybe come by and visit. They can look through it and there's a lot of great cool paintings and interesting things in here. But the second one I wanted you to purchase for the reason we're going to start clipping out these paintings out of this book. So you're going to have one book that you're going to trim out all of the paintings that you want to work on. So we'll, we'll cover that next in a few minutes. So that's why I suggest buying two of these. One of them, you're going to trim out the pictures, cut them out with a pair of scissors, and we're going to use them to um, work with our uh, clear translucent um, clipboard. And then we'll show you how you're going to trace onto watercolor paper. And then the last thing we need is watercolor paper. And of course, um, I use uh, Fabriano watercolor paper. So you'll see that in the, again, the uh, description box below. I have all my art supplies and you'll see that I use studio watercolor qu quite a lot for a lot of my painting. So I'm hoping you'll pick up the uh, Fabriano studio watercolor. It comes 11 by 17 um, pads of paper. And there's literally like, I think it's 50 sheets for a pad and it really lasts a long time. You can use other papers if you want to as well. And, uh, but I do suggest the Fabriano studio watercolor. Um, paper so that's all we would need actually and uh, so we would just have the additional watercolor paper here so you'd have a sheet of watercolor paper you have my book two of my books one book you're going to trim out the pictures and cut out the pictures the other book you leave for your reference 
so you can uh, use it to um, work from or to leave on your coffee table. And then we have all the rest of the things here. Clear, see-through, translucent, clipboard, spritzer bottle you can get anywhere. This Prangle 16 set, of course, scotch tape, magic tape. It, probably you have that around the house, you have tissues around the house. You could use a glass maybe, like a nice heavy bottom glass for your water container if you needed to. And then just a couple brushes. One brush comes with this set. So you have this brush that comes with the set, so you don't even have to really get a brush. But if you want to pick up a couple extra brushes, it's a good idea to have that. And I do, again, in the description box below, we have extra brushes that are pretty much like this. There's, these are some square flat brushes. And um, there's other ones too you can research. But the uh, round brush is really the, the main brush I use, the round brush. And again, the paper. The paper is important. All right, so we're all ready to get going here. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll kind of show you all of the um, techniques and methods that we're going to use to create the paintings in this video. And then by the time you're finished with this video, you'll have seen all the steps and necessary things you have to do to get started in watercolor. And you'll be having a great time of it too because you're going to be creating some really beautiful um, compositions uh, in watercolor. Okay, all right, so we'll be right back in a second. All right, so we're going to get uh, started here on our next phase of the um, tutorial. So I'm going to set my water bucket over to the right there. I'm going to put my tissues over here again, the same location to my right. We'll set the scotch tape over there too as well. We're going to set up our watercolor paper in just a second. So I'll just uh, start to get everything situated correctly here. Um, we'll put our brushes over here to the left. Our palette, I'm going to set to the left for right now. Over here. Spritz a bottle over on the left hand side. So I just want to leave plenty of room over here. So what we're going to do now is we have our clipboard, clear, translucent clipboard. I'm going to set that aside for right now too as well. Because what we're going to do right now is we're going to go into my book. And we're going to find a couple of paintings that we want to create. And we're going to want to clip out our pictures from our book. Incidentally, down below, if you want to see all of my book, the, I have a quick two, three minute video and I cover each page of my um, new book. So you can see and within a minute or two, you can see all the pages of my, my book so that uh, you don't have to wonder what's in there and what you're going to get when you buy my book. You'll see everything in there. All the exercises, compositions, there's some preliminary things about um, watercolor that you'll need to know, some exercises and some information, important information. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a few paintings that I know everyone's going to really enjoy. Everyone always enjoys on my channel flower paintings. So let me pick one of these flower paintings. Maybe we can do, we can trace one of these. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's, let's trace this one here. So what I'll do is you can do this really many different ways, trimming out your pictures, but right now I'm just going to trim out this one picture. So I'll take this like so, and I'm just going to take the one page carefully. I want to get the one page here, and then I'm just going to trim with a pair of scissors like this. And then Actually, the way to really do it is to buy three books. And the reason I say buy three books is when you go through my book, you would trim out all of the first page on as you go like this. Then your second, the second copy of my book, you would you would clip out all of these pages on the back. So there's paid, you know, there's paintings on front and back of my book on the pages. So if you want to trim out this one, you might be able to actually get, you wouldn't have to actually, some of them you'll be able to get two paintings from one page. So you would be able to trim this one out here and then this one down here you can trim out. So, but not all of them work out the same way. So this one here, you could trim out this page and you have this beautiful, wonderful flower painting here. And then on this side here, we have some coastal, beautiful uh, boathouse and some coastal areas, the bay. Uh, we have a gorgeous uh, scene along the ocean here, a coastal scene with the ocean coming in and a wonderful house along the ocean. So some of these, you know, you probably might have to 
have two different copies of the book just to trim out all the paintings you might want to do. But uh, in any case, we're just having a fun time. I'm just kind of explaining how I've worked with my watercolors over the years. Um, so this here, we've clipped out this one painting. It's perfect. We're going to use this one here for our flower painting. And let's pick out another like coastal scene. I know everyone really enjoys the beautiful water and uh, things like this. Ocean, beach, coasts. Let's find a good one here. Let's look through. We've got plenty of great photographs of our paint, my paintings here. So you'll pick the best one you like. There's beautiful lighthouses. We could do a lighthouse if we want. We have beautiful lighthouses here, boats, ocean compositions, beautiful. Some more boats here. We have some beach scenes with hurricane fences. Um, what else? What are we going to do here? I would say, oh, this is a nice one. Hey, this one's really fun. We could do. We could. We could. Let's let's create this one here. This one's really nice. So we'll clip out this one. This is uh, the ocean with some figures. And again, we're tracing, so you're going to be able to trace your figures here and be able to, you know, tackle this type of a painting in the beginning because you're going to trace and then eventually you're going to be, um, as you're practicing all of your drawing skills, 15 minutes every day, you'll eventually be able to draw this and you won't have to really trace anymore. You'll just be able to render these easily without tracing, but in the beginning you're going to need to trace a little bit to create some beautiful paintings. So that's what we want to do. We want to have us, let's create some beautiful paintings right out of the gate. Okay, so <clears throat> we've clipped out some paintings and then what I'm going to do is, just so I remember, I'm going to take this book here and I'm going to call this, this one here I'm going to say this is my, um, clip copy so I'll know that I'm clipping out paintings from this copy here and I'll set that across from me in my studio so I know that's the book I'm gonna go to that copy of my book for my clip out the paintings okay so now we've got our two paintings here that we're gonna work from a flower painting and a coastal painting an ocean, beautiful ocean and beach scene with a couple of figures at the ocean, maybe reading some books, meditating, watching, having fun, having a little bit of adult beverages out there on the ocean. Maybe it's a private beach. And uh, let's see here. We'll do the um, flower painting first and then we'll finish up with our coastal beautiful beach scene here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have our clear clipboard. We're going to take our paper here. This is our, uh, again, I use Fabriano Studio Watercolor, which is a good student grade paper, but it really is a great paper for professional artists too, because it's such a good quality. You can use it for finished paintings. If you're going to put paintings in galleries or for sale, you can use this paper. It's really that good. And I'm just going to trim this paper in half. It's an 11 by 14. I'm going to trim it down. So we'll use one for each of the paintings. So we're going to trim this in half. So there we have two paintings. We cut the paper in half. So we have one for each painting, a sheet of paper for each painting. And you can actually... This one here, I think we can yeah, divide it a second time, so we can even get four. We can get four paintings, really. I think on this one sheet of paper. So you can see how that 11 by 14 sheet of paper, the Fabriano Studio watercolor, a watercolor pad. Incidentally, it's down below in the comment section below. I have my all of my art supplies. A lot of my, you know, 90% of my art supplies are in the comment section below. You might have to click on the word more for more information and you'll see all the links and it's all Amazon. You just go on Amazon and you'll see all the my art supplies there. So now we have our painting we clipped out of my book. We have a beautiful clean sheet of watercolor paper, our Fabriano paper. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tape this down 
like so. We just want to make sure we're in the right location. So let's let's do it this way. Let's make sure we have plenty. Okay, that's good. We'll slide that down a little bit. We just want to make sure we're good there. So now that I have this set in the right, I just want to make sure when I put my paper slipped under my water when I put my watercolor paper underneath the clip here, the clip on the clipboard, this clip like that, I just want to make sure it's going to be fit correctly with the with the photograph with the uh, photo of my painting here. So then now I just take my magic tape and all I need is two pieces, one on the bottom like that. Magic tape works perfect. You don't need anything else. It peels right off when you're done. I'll put a little bit up here just so I have it secured like that. Perfect. Then we go like this. We put our watercolor paper under there like that. And that's all we have to do. Now the thing is the studio lights that I have when I'm videoing here, making my uh, creating my uh, tutorial videos, they're so bright it's really not going to kind of makes sense for me to put the light underneath this and, and do the tracing. What I'll do is I'm going to stop the camera. I'm going to actually just walk over to my window. I have a window in my studio. I'm just going to hold the clipboard, this clipboard here with the painting underneath this paper. And when I hold this up to the window, I'll see clearly the picture underneath it because the light's going to shine through. I'll be able to see it. I'll be able to trace it. And then I'll come back and you'll see how I've traced this in just literally five minutes. Okay, so let's do that. I'll come back in just a second or two. And then incidentally, you can, you, there's other ways you can do this too. You can actually, um, you can use a, um, I have this, uh, this is a light that you can put underneath. You can put your clipboard and put your light underneath like this. Like that. The only thing is you can't see it because the lights are so bright here that I'm using. But you could use this um, magnifying glass with a light, with a light on it, and then put the clipboard over the top of that, and you'll see right through, and you'll be able to trace your subject matter. Um, you could also use a regular lamp. You could just hold your um, clipboard up to a lamp, to a bright lamp. You turn on the lamp, the light, and it should be bright enough that if you hold this over. Ne just near your lamp that you have, you'll be able to see underneath the composition, the painting, and you'll be able to trace it. So that's all we're going to do. All right, so I'll come back in just a minute and you'll see I'll have traced my uh, flower painting here within five or ten minutes and I'm done. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, that was almost effortless. I took my pencil. I have a um, 2B pencil, soft lead pencil. I just held this up to the window. By my uh, In my studio I have a window. Uh, it's got pretty bright light coming through. Today is a overcast day but it's still pretty bright out. Pretty good sun sunlight. And that's all I did was hold this clipboard up with this my clipping out of my book of this vase, coffee cup and a container, milk container and then some beautiful flowers. Just like that, you can see how good that, oh, let's zoom in. You can see how when I traced it, I just had a fun time. I didn't agonize over every detail of it. I just kind of loosely, quickly traced over. Let's see if I can get a little better. Sometimes I have to adjust my lighting a little bit to kind of see how it... But that, you should see that, right? That's pretty good. Yeah, you can see the pencil lines there. I'm looking through my viewfinder on my video camera here, and I can see that that looks pretty good. You can see the pencil drawing. So I literally took only like two or three minutes to just trace over the top of my, my painting that I've clipped out of my book. And now you have a gorgeous, beautiful um, pencil drawing that you can work with, and then you're going to have more fun with the painting process. So I want you to have fun with the painting process of your watercolors in the beginning. Um, and then again, you're going to work 15 minutes each day with just drawing and sketching everyday items that you can find that you like to, that you find around the house, or you're going to look out your window, or maybe you're going to sit on the back porch, or, you know, maybe you're going to look through some magazines, or you're going to 
look at something on your TV and maybe you can, uh, if you have some DVDs, you can hit pause and draw some things from your DVDs if you have like uh, your favorite um, um, movies that you might like to watch or whatever it is. You can use any subject matter you want. You can just rest a, a pencil or a paintbrush on the table in front of you and draw those things. So just draw 15 minutes every day and just draw everything you can because the more different type of subject matter you uh, draw, it'll just train train your mind and your hands and your eye, hand-eye coordination to be able to render anything you're seeing in front of you. So if you're only drawing like one or two different types of subject matter, like if you're only drawing flowers, actually flowers are a great thing to draw because they're very unique. They're very interesting. They have lots of different curves and shapes and lines. Those are, these are great things you can draw too, flowers. So in any case, you can see here, we've got a beautiful rendering, pencil drawing. Now we're ready to paint. So what I'll do is I'll, let's uh, zoom back out. Let's set up for our painting. So what I'll do is I'll do it live right here, right now. So you can kind of see what I'm going to do. I'll take this out now. So now we have our paper. And then I'll take this and we'll just, it's so easy, right? We have the magic tape, which peels right off. So you don't even have to worry about it. I'm sorry about that loud noise. Um, and let's see, we have our painting like that. I'll try to zoom in too, so we, we can kind of see what we're doing here. And then we'll take our, we have to get our palette in here. I want to get the palette. Okay, that's good, all right? We want to see the whole palette, all the colors. And then some of our mixing sections over here. We don't need the whole mixing area. That'll be good like this. All right, now, so we have that there. We could slide this over. I'm trying to maximize things here so we get the most bang for our buck here. All right, that's good, right? There we go. All right, so that's good. All right, so I'll start taping this down. You can use magic tape to tape down your, at first, and then we'll use some artist tape. But let's get the, let's get these in position first with the magic tape. Okay, so you can see everything well. You can see the original photograph of my painting that's from my book. I'll magic tape that down onto the board. Then what I want to do is, you'll always notice, I always mention this, please, um, Try to try to tape your um, the border of your watercolor paintings. So what I'll do is I'll do this here. Try to tape the border of your watercolor paper, and if you have to, you can lift up your. You can set that aside for right now, and let's just get this correctly situated here. So what I'm going to do now is. I want everyone to use artist tape, drafting tape, good, good drafting tape, also painter's tape. You can get at the um, big box stores that painters use, professional and commercial painters. They use um, frog tape and uh, blue tape, things like that. That'll be really good to use. It won't tear up your paper when you lift it up off your uh, watercolor paper. So you'd want to use delicate surface. It's called delicate surface uh, painter's tape. And again, you can get that at the big box stores, your Home Depots, your Lowe's. You could order it on Amazon. They have it on Amazon too. Painter's tape, professional painter's tape. And again, you're looking for delicate surface paint. Painter's tape. And what that means is it's not too strong of a glue on the tape that when you lift it up, it's going to rip your watercolor paper to shreds and ruin and pull up half of your painting. So if you use the delicate surface, um... Painter's tape, you won't have a problem. When you lift up your tape, it, it will not ruin your watercolor paper. I know because I've ruined paintings before using the other tapes. Not good. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's put this again here. Let me see how we're looking. Okay, good. So you can see this, the reference photo. Like that. We'll tape this down again. Some magic tape. Nice, simple 
peels up real easy, won't ruin anything. And now, the last thing I do is I just put a little bit of tape on my palette so that it doesn't move around while we're painting because that's kind of uh, aggravating to have that happen. And we'll slide this over like this. And I'll just put this here, a little bit of tape, a little bit of artist tape or uh, drafting tape on the palette so it doesn't slide around. And I try to do this on camera so you kind of see how I'm setting up everything in case you're going to be making your own videos eventually. And you're going to have your own YouTube uh, uh, teaching site. If you want to eventually uh, go on YouTube and share your artwork, you can do it. It's, it's very simple, actually. Not a lot of people do it, but it's kind of not that difficult, actually. It just takes a little bit of time to set things up. And So here we go. We have everything all perfectly set up. Let's take a quick break. We've done a lot of work right now, so I just want to take a quick um, break. I want to sit down for about two minutes or so, and then we'll get started, and you'll see how easy this is once we've got this all set up, taped. We have our painting taped. Maybe I'll just do a little bit of, um, I just want to create this table all the way out to the edges here, and then we could even go around here too with the uh, pencil just so we have a, a good border around this here. Like that. And we could fill in that border later. Actually, I can do that now. Good. All right, let's come back in just a second and we will begin painting. Okay, so now we're gonna get started with our painting. Again, this process is really simple where you just follow along each step of the way as we go. So you would just, if you really want to get this process down and really have it like um, set so that it's like a kind of like a program you follow, you would just take this video and just watch it, uh, you know, a number of times. You might even take some notes and this way you can do this, replicate the same process over and over and over again. And you'll have great results right in the, from the beginning when you're starting out with your watercolors. And again, that's why I have these extreme beginners videos. So that this way, anyone that's just starting out, and if you're, again, if you're just starting out here, uh, I thank you so much for coming by. I want you to have confidence in what I'm doing here on YouTube, in my teaching, and how we go about doing our watercolors, creating watercolors. You're going to get better at watercolors consistently. And again, all I do is just give basic instruction that's really going to just go a long way. So again, we're going to practice our drawing 15 minutes every day if we can. Yes, you're going to miss a few days here and there. That's totally understandable. Um, we're all busy. We have a busy schedules in life and things like that, or things come up where you can't always do it. But if you're just shooting for that goal of 15 minutes every day of just doing a little simple sketch of something, whatever you can, sometimes you'll do a little bit more. Maybe you'll practice a half an hour a day do a larger drawing, let's say, you work, you just basically grab a pen or a pencil and you have like sheets of paper or you can purchase some notebooks and things like that and just draw on those, some sketchbooks with a uh, plain white paper or you can just have some printer paper. You can grab a bunch of printer paper and just put them in a clipboard and just draw to your heart's content each day. So I'll start out with my, um, the Prang Oval 16 set has, again, this round brush that the paint set comes with and this is plenty good enough to start with. And then I'll just have my water, clean, fresh clean water to my right over here. We have our palette here. So what I'll do is I'll start mixing some colors and I'll try to do the darks first. So we'll look at this painting and we'll say, what are the darks here? Let's start with those first. And another consideration we will have when we start out with is usually, you'll, you'll recall that we usually um, paint either a la prima or glazing technique. So that that is like a term you'll want to kind of or two terms you'll want to learn as you go and in my book I cover it extensively so if you're purchasing my book you're going to have all the notes right in the book you don't even have to take any notes all you can just refer to the book that I have but in any case um let's just do a separate piece of tape here just so I can kind of I don't want to distract our uh, vision as we're doing this painting but I'll just do a quick so when we're looking at this type of painting we're saying, are we going to do this a la prima or in the glazing technique? And I can tell you right now, looking at this, this is a painting you'd want to do a la prima, which means all at one time, starting with the darks first, the purples, the dark purple flowers, some of these dark shadows. Let's 
let's create the darks first and then we can work and do the lighter colors, the lighter tonal values as we call them. So again, when you're looking at your painting, the first thing you're going to look at when you're looking at your subject matter, whether you're outdoors looking at a scene or you're looking at some artwork that you're going to paint from, like my book and my paintings in my book. Of course, if you buy my book, you'll see that I, every painting, I tell you whether I'm using a la prima or glazing technique or if I'm using sort of a combination of the two. So you'll kind of have that already. But in any case, let's say this is going to be a la prima. A la prima. Or you might use glazing technique. Glazing technique. So you can either use a la prima or glazing technique. So here we're going to use the a la prima technique. I just want to put that down here so you can kind of see that. I'll lift that up. I don't want to distract our vision as we're painting with notes. And then let's get started right away. Um, I'll use my Prang Oval 16 brush. And what I'll do is we're going to get some of that purple right away. Now you can kind of see I'm going straight in the paint and getting really dark, beautiful, exciting color like that for these darks here. So what you'd want to avoid is, just, just to mention it, you'd want to avoid doing this. You see how light that is over here on the left? You want to avoid that light, really light wash. You want to go with the dark wash like this. And how do we do it? We just go straight into the paint. After you spritz your paints one time with your spritzer bottle, so you have your spritzer bottle, you spritz your paints just one time really quick, that's all you need. And then when you go in, you can get really, really beautiful darks like this. Rich, straight paint almost right out of the palette. And then we can go right in and start getting some colors in there, like so. And that's it. And always remember, you can, you're the artist, you're going to be able to adjust things as you go. And then what we'll do is we'll go in and get some greens over here. So we'll do some greens, dark green and the lighter green here. A little bit of yellow. Mix in a little bit of yellow with that. Maybe a touch of brown in both just to gray those down just a tiny bit and then we're just going to do this we're going to sort of mix that in like that some more purple here like that and then we're going to go in and get our greens here so we're going to do some green leaf forms here see how we do that we're going to go in and just get the green color straight green Like that. And then there's some more greens here. So as you can see, I'm trying to get the darker bits of color here that you can see in this painting. And then I'll mix some brown into this purple, just to make it a little bit more, uh, we'll gray it down a little bit. Now the key here is you don't want to paint, uh, just, I just wanted to mention this, just I, I, you know, quickly. Can you see how I've left a lot of lights, white paper? I've left a lot of white paper within this whole bouquet of flowers. The tendency is, just mentioning it, you know, just mentioning it, t the tendency is to kind of like fill this whole area in with paint. So what we have to do is really think ahead now before we start painting in all this area in the center of our bouquet of flowers is let's leave white paper in there. So now you're going to see that I'm really kind of like 
that is it for me. I'm not doing, I'm not going to, I'm not going to paint any more. I'll use a little bit of orange and, and uh, yellow here to do a couple little small bits of, uh, but I'm going to leave lots of white paper in there. You can kind of see that, I hope. So I haven't filled in this whole area with um, with paint. I want to leave lots of white paper in there. And then we're going to just basically make the note. Let's make a note to ourselves, just so we have it. The light is coming from here, so we're going to make our little light insignia. We always want to have that light insignia in our, somewhere on our tape around our painting, or drawn in with a little bit of pencil somewhere around the outer edges, just so we kind of know, okay, the light's coming from here this way. So that means we're going to have a shadow on our vase like this. And then what we do is we have a tissue in our hand because we want to make sure we can handle our watercolors with uh, efficiency and uh, expertise. So we will take our brush, rinse off the brush in the water container, dry off some of that water on a tissue so that our brush is damp, not soaking wet. And then we can slowly mix this edge here softly so that we have a soft transition from the darker shadow over to the light if that makes sense and then we can add some warm too let's add some warm golden color into this shadow too and i'll do the same thing rinse off the brush dry off some of the water on a tissue and then just gently take a damp brush and kind of work that over that way and then you could add some more darker dark there a little bit more golden color there, like that. Okay, I hope that makes sense how we did that. Then we take some more purple and blue. Well, some blue, purple, a little bit of brown. So we're going to make like a nice grayish color, a little bit of blue in there too. And we just want to do some shadowing like this. Cast shadows from the flower pot here and the flowers. So that's going to be some shadowing like this. I hope you'll be able to see that I'm kind of building with my darks still. I'm still working with my darks. And then here, purple and brown. So we want to make this a little darker right under here like this. So then I infuse in a little bit of the darker wash like that. This little bit of darker color over here. And you can splash over here a little bit too if you want, just to get a little. And you can kind of see how that works out. And purple over here. We'll do some shadowing over here. So let's just do our shadows all at one time there. A little bit here for our coffee cup. Like that. Then we can take that color. Add a little bit of brown, a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of green. Mix up a nice little mixture of gray. And we'll just do that. Take our brush, rinse off our brush in clean water, dry off the brush on a tissue so there's not too much water on the brush. And then we just soften that edge there where the shadow is on that coffee cup. looks good. Then we could take a, on the tip of our brush a little bit of this paint. Now incidentally if you want to get a really nice point on your brush you take your brush you dip it in the paint and then you take your brush and you roll it. Can you see how my fingers are rolling this brush like this? That gives you a really sharp point on the brush. You see that? How I got a really sharp point on the brush? That's how we can get a nice sharp point on the brush so that we can go in here and get a little bit of that darker uh, shadow inside the coffee cup like this on the top of the coffee cup like that and we could do the same up here and then we could take some more of these colors and just do a little bit of a shadow over here like this 
And then again, the same thing, rinse off the brush in clean water, dry off the brush on a tissue, and then soften that edge right here. Like that. And then we can go in and get a little bit of a darker mixture here, again, spinning the brush like we were doing before to get that point. We roll the brush with our hands like this and roll it like that. And then we can do a little bit of a darker there, like that. Okay, so you see how I'm going in and layering some of these uh, washes if I want to make it a little darker. I go in, add some darker purple there. Straight paint though, right now, so I'm doing straight paint. And I think we're pretty much good. I think we almost have everything all set. Let's do a little more green over here and yellow. There might be a little more green and yellow over here for a couple more of the... I'll do a couple splashes like this. Like that. And then maybe I'll do a touch of a background color over here, just on the back of the table. There we go. Look how that looks good that looks. If you add a little bit of that back... Um, that color in the, in the background on the wall... So if you can imagine, I'm using all the mixture, mixtures we've already used. so that it all harmonizes together, all the colors and washes. And you just add a little bit of that color to the back here and you just kind of swirl it around a little bit. You get that, that effect of the wall behind like this. Splash a little bit. Splash. Get a little bit of that color on the wall. And this way you're going to leave the tablecloth. So we're going to pretend this is white tablecloth, and you're just going to make the wall behind, behind here a mixture of all the colors that we've used. So you're kind of mixing a gray color, really, a, a basically a gray, grayish color, um, just to, and then you just have a little fun and do a little bit of, a little bit of, you know, fun swirling around have fun with watercolor swirl around have a good time you're going to be practicing a lot a lot so you're going to be always practicing basically based that's what it is with uh, watercolors you're always practicing and your finished paintings are always your practice basically at whatever level you're at so if you're five years painting well you're practicing in watercolor for five years and then when you're creating a painting it's basically your practice as you're painting <laughs> for five years so when you start out your first year you're going to do this you're going to trace so you have some good pencil drawings to work from and then once you're three four years after drawing 15 minutes every day as much as you can i know you're going to miss a few days here and there everyone does then um you'll be pretty much you won't you won't need to trace as much once in a while you might have to trace if someone asks you to do a project for them or something and you want to make sure it's nailed down a hundred percent and you don't want to have any problems uh, with you know with uh, customers and things you know you'll you'll use the tracing um, to uh, nail down your paintings a hundred percent good but in any case look how we've got this this is really good. So I'm sure you're going to handle this beautifully. Um, I'll do a few more brown and purple. Brown and purple here, a little bit of green. I just want to get a few more maybe lines here, just like that. Just a couple like that. Just a few. Maybe a little shadowing under there too on the on the vase. Well, I hope you. I'm hoping you had a great time doing this first painting, and we just started because we have one more painting to go. We're gonna have a great time. The next painting we're gonna do is I know 
everyone's one of most people on my channel i know you all really enjoy shore paintings and that's what we're going to do next we're going to do this painting next right after we're uh wrapped up here so let me um finish up here and uh, we'll uh, reset everything so that we can do this second painting and we'll go through the process again one more time so it really solidifies the um step-by-step -step, uh process you're going to use when you're creating your uh your paintings your compositions and your paintings um as you go when you're just starting out in watercolor okay so we'll uh, be right back in just a second and we'll get started with our beautiful ocean scene with a couple of figures on the beach can't go wrong with this type of painting it just has so much exciting feelings to it you're on the beach you're out there you're in the sand the hot sunny beautiful weather you're out there the ocean waves are crashing in you get into the spirit of things into the into the um zen of the moment as you're painting this and next thing you know you feel like you're actually there when you're painting this all right so <laughs> it's a kind of a fun thing when you're painting it's fun it's exhilarating and you actually feel like you're there in the places that you're painting so um, when we do these on location style paintings like this, you really do feel like you're there when you're getting your mind into it. You're hearing the waves, the ocean crashing in, all that fun stuff. All right, so let's get started with another painting. Uh, we'll have two paintings on this video, of course. So let's uh, put this here and um, we'll be right back and we'll set up for a second painting. All right, so we're gonna move along here. We're gonna take our beautiful shore scene here, our ocean, coastal seascape scene here with some figures. We're going to do this next. We're going to create this painting next. We're going to take this and we're going to save this so we can paint this again and again if we want. We can paint this two, three, four times, as many times as we want. I'll just leave that tape on there for now. I can just trim off the tape. Sometimes even the magic tape sticks. So you can always just trim off the magic tape right at the edge of the paper, like so. And then you can just tape over it again. And you can do that as many times as you need to. So that won't affect the uh, painting at all. Okay, and then we're going to take a look and see how this looks when we lift up the uh, tape off our painting that we just created. That looks good when you have a nice border around the painting. All right, let's get started with our second painting. So we're going to replicate the process. The first thing I'll do is uh, let me take some my spritzer bottle. I'll just clean up my palette a little bit. So I'll just note note that um, it's a lot better if you can clean your palette between paintings because you're going to be using different colors. We're going to use different colors in this next painting, maybe some similar colors too, but it's better just to start with a fresh, clean palette. And what we'll do is we'll set everything up again like we did before, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, again, use our translucent, clear plastic clipboard. We're going to take our painting, put our painting down. Again, this is from my book. I clipped this out of my book. So you just, you buy a copy of my book and you call that your clip copy and you clip all the paintings out of my book and you use those for your compositions as you're working. And then uh, you'll, you'll be happy to do that. It'll really uh, work out great. You'll have a lot of good practice time in on just small compositions like this. So again, I'll take this and uh, we'll set it down here. I just want to make sure my paper is going to fit fine. Okay, good. Yep. 
that'll fit fine if I put some magic tape now on my take some magic tape and put it on there just enough to hold it in place doesn't have to be perfect just a couple pieces there to hold it in place then we take our watercolor paper we clip it underneath the clipboard and as long as you're covering the whole photograph that we have from our book you're all set then what we do is we hold this up to a window or you can hold this up to a light um, you know like a regular lamp um, or you can also purchase a um, again we were showing you before we have a uh, this is a um, magnifying glass with a light on the on the on the magnifying glass and you can place that underneath the drawing and you'll be able to see the drawing fine right now under these really bright lights that I have in my studio as I'm doing my video you can't see it but if you use this type of a device which is basically again a magnifying glass with um, I have this I purchased this on Amazon I think it was the best um, best buy on Amazon that means that most most people are buying this magnifying glass because it works great um, it's battery operated it has three different light settings it has a a bright a dim and then a warm color like that there's a warm color light you, you'll see that on Amazon if you look that up on Amazon for magnifying glasses so in any case many ways you can get some light you hold it up to a window you can go outdoors and just hold it up to the sunlight and then you'll be able to trace it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually go by my window in my studio. I have a window in my studio has plenty of, plenty of bright light. So I'm just going to walk up to the window and just hold this near the window and trace this scene, which is the ocean and a few figures. And that's it. It's actually a very uh, simplistic um, painting. We have the ocean some sand and beaches, some waves crashing in, and we have two figures. So we'll trace this and come back and we'll paint it. Okay, so easy enough. Um, and again, this is perfect for you. If you're just starting out in watercolor, you want to get some great drawings, pencil drawings on your watercolor paper, and then you can paint. And you'll feel good. You'll be painting, working with your colors, you're mixing, you'll follow along here. You're going to follow all of our videos. You're going to subscribe below on the right hand side. So you don't miss a thing. You don't want to miss any of our videos as we go. So um, that's all you need to do. And again, please um, always understand that I'm trying to just share what I think is going to be the best for you as an artist, as a watercolor artist. I think your best bet is when you're first starting out, you'll want to trace until you're like up to speed on drawing because drawing does take a, a quite a while to learn. So you're practicing your 15 minutes every day. Uh, with your drawing, you're drawing anything you can. You're going to grab a pencil, a piece of paper, a roll of tape. You're going to you're going to draw some things you see out the window. You're going to use a magazine and draw some things from magazines. Whatever it is, you just whatever you like to draw, just draw plenty of it. Uh, use a pencil or a pen and just have a sketch, a couple sketch pads around. Leave a sketch pad in your car. Leave one in your pocketbook or your your um uh your um go bag or your um backpack whatever it is keep some sketchbooks everywhere with some pencils and this way wherever you are if you have some downtime let's say you go to a doctor's appointment you can sit in the doctor's office and and just draw for 10-15 minutes uh, doing some sketching you can sketch some things inside the doc doctor's office I used to always do that all the time and uh, you know wh wherever you can get 10-15 minutes in a day you're gonna do it and if you can get more time in that's even better but in any case, let me come right back. I just want to trace this by my window in my studio. And we'll come right back and you'll see how easy it is to trace this. Okay, so I'll be right back. All right, so we are back and I just did my tracing. I went over by my window in my studio and I copied here this. I traced this with my clear translucent clipboard okay I'll put that there okay we'll put this here okay so that's fine we're gonna have this here up 
upper right hand corner so you can see that we're gonna have the painting there visible on video on camera and then we have our painting here okay then I'm just gonna slide this out of the picture for a second and we'll put our tape down And I was encouraged, please, please tape your, your watercolor paper. Like so. Gives it a nice border. You can use drafting tape. This is Pro. It's the, the brand is called Pro Drafting Tape. They make great watercolor tape for your paintings. You also can purchase uh, frog tape from your local hardware stores. Also, um, I think there's a lot of great products out there. There's 3M. They make painter's tape. This is frog tape. This, this is the blue tape. This is a little bit, I think, a little bit too strong of a, a glue or tack. You want to have low tack. It's called low tack um, tape. That would be for like fine moldings and trims. If you're in the painting aisles of the store, you'd want to have a low tack trim tape, painter's tape. Okay, so we have everything taped down. Okay, good. Then we're going to, from here, we'll put this back on camera. Like this. And then we'll take our uh, scotch invisible tape again. And we'll just a couple pieces just to make sure it's secured down. Like that. Okay, perfect. All right, let's get started. So, um, we'll probably I'm going to use my Simply Simmons number six or number nine, I should say. I'm going to actually I'm going to change out my water so you can kind of see I have my um, water container. I'm going to empty out this murky water, muddy looking water, and then I'll take some fresh clean water, bottled water, and fill it up. I usually fill it up about halfway, not even halfway. I'll set that aside to the right side of my table. And then what we'll do is we'll start painting. And I'm going to do this one. This I'm going to create this painting the same way we did before, a la prima. So what we'll do is we'll just take a piece of tape, just so we I can kind of put it right on camera here so we can all kind of see. Okay, we're just going to do that quick. And we're going to say this is going to be a la prima method. A la prima, all at one time, all one go. I'll start out with the darks. Probably I'm going to start with the figures. Okay, <clears throat> so I'll just get my uh, brush. Spritz a little bit of fresh clean water in my spritzer bottle right onto the paints to the Prang Oval 16 set. And then we're going to start <clears throat> with our uh, darkest dark. So let me start with the figure in the chair. Let me make some darks here. So I'm going to go with uh, blue. I'm 
almost stray paint. I don't have hardly any water. Purple. So we have purple. Blue. Um, a little bit of orange in there. Rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of the water, and I'll go in and get some orange, yellow, brown. That's some flesh tones, a little bit of red. What else? A little bit of green. Okay, so we have some good colors mixed here. We have some war uh, cooler colors here. Greens, blues, a little bit of a, a brown in there just to gray down some of the blues and the purples. Purple, blue, a little bit of brown, a little bit of orange. We have some greens here, a little bit of this uh, turquoise color, which is like a viridian green. This is the um, beautiful kind of turquoisey color that we're going to use too. We have some of that. We have our flesh tones too here. So we have some good flesh colors, orange, red, yellow, a little bit of brown. A little bit of yellow, a good flesh tone, a little bit of beach sand color up here, brown and yellow, a little bit of red maybe. So you can kind of see already I'm mixing the colors that I'm seeing in the painting. The blues, the blues, the purples, some purple, some blue, some flesh tones for the flesh tones of the figures. Um, some gold and yellow for the beach, maybe some of that sand color. And again, we have plenty of blues and greens, but we're going to, we're going to mix the ocean, uh, washes in a little bit, but first let's get our figures in. So we're going to start with our figures first, and then I'll just start going in and I'm going to try to start to get in my the darks of the figures here, so we're going to do a bit of the chair here. And then there's a little bit of the purple here, we'll do a little bit of the purple over here. A little bit of uh, water there, just to get it. Now this uh, brush here I'm using, the, the Simply Simmons, I notice that the point is getting a little bit, uh, um, sometimes you're going to notice your brushes, brushes after a while, they do wear down a little bit, the tips, and then you don't have as good a point. So right now I'm going to go and see if I can use this, which is my um, Da Vinci uh, synthetic travel brush. That's a round brush. Let's see if I can get a little bit of a better point. So I'll put that in the water. And see if what happens here. Let's see if that how that looks. Okay, so you can kind of see that's a little bit of a better point there that I have with this brush, which is the simply uh, or the Da Vinci Number no. Five travel brush, which is a synthetic brush, and it's not that expensive actually because it's synthetic. It's synthetic, so it's a little bit uh, less expensive. Your synthetic brushes, but it does give me a really good point here, so that I can do a little more um, details. Like you can see the chair, the chair, legs of the chair. And I am painting quite small here. This is like four by four by five inches. Let's see what we have here. Four and a half inches by six inches. So we have four and a half inches by six inches. So this is almost like postcard size. So that that requires smaller brushes like this. And um, I'm gonna. Add a little bit of gold into that blue color, 
so that there's some warm and cools here. And there might be a little bit of this violet color. Let's do a little violet, see how that looks. Sometimes we experiment with some new colors. Okay, and uh, let's keep working on that figure over here. And again, some warm and cool colors, so I don't want to make it just blue or green. The chair, the chair is sort of blue and green with some golds in there too. And uh, some blue and purple here, a little bit of brown, darker dark here. A little bit of a then we're going to go with some flesh tones we're going to have a flesh tone here and also his leg we'll do some flesh tones there and all you have to do is just add a little bit of that color there of the flesh tone and that's all we need to do we don't have to explain everything here just a little bit of the flesh tone then we'll do a little bit of this darker dark here there's some dark hair this figure has some dark hair let's do the dark hair here she has a little bit of a, a bun on top of her hair like that And she has on a uh, blanket of some sort, like that. And some blue on the bottom there. And then some more purple for the shadow under here. So she's going to have a shadow underneath here. A shadow there too, under our figure there. You could also lift up some paint if you have to. And then some more, uh, we have some backpacks here or some duffel bags, some interesting things here. Kind of just like little small bits of color. And then at this point, I think our figures are looking fine. We have completed the figures so far now in the painting. Uh, a little more of that um, lavender color for the, um, the color of light. A little bit of that light lavender color on the beach. I'll do a little bit of the sand color, a little bit of that golden color here. Just scrub on some color for the sand a little bit. A little bit of blue maybe too. A little bit of blue color. A little bit of splashing with the sand color. So I have some speckles of sand here in the foreground like that. Okay. All right, now's the perfect time we can actually take a break. We did the um, figures. We have that completed, the chairs, the figures. Um, maybe we'll do a little bit of the arm here, flesh tone. This figure is wearing a hat. We'll paint around the hat with a little bit of uh, ocean color. And I'll put some ocean colors in there, like that. 
but we're just getting started with our ocean color, so don't worry, we'll be right back in a second. A little bit of sand color over here. And this is the fun of watercolor, add in some colors, make things exciting if you want to, some interesting colors. I'll add some yellow there, like that. Okay, now at this point, we'll take another break. I'll add some more sand feel with a little bit of sp splashing. Like that. Okay, good. All right, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to get the distant ocean and sky wash completed. And then we'll have a finished painting. And you'll see that we've really covered a lot of um, ground in this video. We've covered two beautiful paintings compositions that you can do as a, just beginning with watercolors where we covered all of the steps you need and I'm hoping you're going to subscribe on the right hand side below so you don't miss anything going forward in the future. Keep here, stick with me on uh, YouTube. We're going to learn a lot together. We're going to cover a lot of details that are going to get you to the next level with your watercolor painting and of course if you're just starting out you're going to really really learn a lot in the beginning and that's the most important part when you're first starting out in watercolor you're going to be absorbing like a sponge all the information that you can because all that information is going to be a benefit to you as you move forward in watercolor and uh, so let, let's keep working at it and uh, i'll be right back in a second and then we'll start in with the darker ocean colors over here uh, maybe a couple of figures out here swimming around in the ocean a little bit and a little bit of the sky colors up here and we'll have a finished painting, a finished composition. Okay, all right, we'll be right back. All right, let's continue on. So we're uh, going to create the ocean, distant ocean horizon line here with some really beautiful darks. We're just going to leave our colors here that we have on the palette. So if you can imagine, uh, it's really helpful, eh, especially if you're beginning in watercolor, to kind of... Um, take a step back and realize if you can get your paint mixtures kind of in your palette first by looking at the colors on your uh, reference photograph, let's say. Let's say we're using our references here and we're saying this is we're going to work from this. Let's start getting these colors that we're seeing here into our palette and kind of mix them in like so. This way you kind of have everything kind of thought out and planned out over here and then it's just a matter of using these uh, washes to transfer them over to the painting. Sometimes, yes, you're going to have to mix up a little bit of a darker wash. Like right now, we do have some blue and some purple over here with some brown mixed in and some orange, but we're going to have to actually make it a little bit darker. You can kind of see how that's quite a bit darker than what, what's here right now. So then all, all we have to do is just one more time, we'll give our paints a spritz with our spritzer bottle. And we talked about in the beginning of this video too, how we're just using a very simplified um, approach to our watercolors with we have everything we need with just a few of these art supplies they're all listed below in the uh, comment section of my video so you can pick up these um, art supplies really simply and uh, very inexpensive there's not it's not um, uh, like you're buying really expensive high-end um, watercolor supplies you know there's there's some very expensive supplies out there maybe eventually when you're painting a couple years you're going to start to invest in more expensive equipment and supplies but right now if you're just starting out all you need is the basics a real good basic set, uh, setup like we have here so we're just going to here like we said we want to get that really dark tonal value as we say tonal value is the real the dark and light of things so that tonal value is really dark there that distant horizon line so i'll pick up some blue that really really dark blue here and some purple and we'll get that in here blue and purple and even some green i'll add some of that turquoisey green and uh, i'll be careful if i just want to make sure i don't lean into any paint so now what we'll do is we'll do the simple um uh, we call this a parallel brush stroke where you're just going to start over here on the left if you're right-handed you're going to work left to right across if you're uh, left-handed, you'd start over here and work your way across this way. And notice too that these washes, the figure, the figures, the, the two figures and the sand and the little bit of um, washes that we did in the water here, this is all 100% dry now. So now we can rest our hand on here if we have to and we can still work comfortably and we don't have to worry about smudging any paint down here. So it is helpful to sometimes take breaks and let sections dry 
and then you can come back in and you don't have to worry. You can rest your hand on the paper like this and then we're going to do our parallel stroke over here to the left, uh, left to right. So I'll just start out and I want to keep my brush right on that pencil line that we created. So the distant uh, line you have for the ocean, it should be level and straight across your painting. You wouldn't want to have it going uphill or downhill or a jag, uh, like a jagged line. You want to have this line really, really straight. If it helps, you can also put a piece of tape down, which let's do that. Let's do that to help ourselves here. If you're just starting out in watercolor and you're saying, oh, wow, I can't paint a straight line all that great. You could take a piece of artist tape, your um, trim tape that you, you purchase at the big box stores like we talked about before. And you just take that and you just gently set the, um, you just press down on, on the edge that's right next to the the area you're going to paint. You don't have to press the whole tape down, just where that is there. And then you can go in and get your, and then you can just paint right over the, the whole thing. You don't have to worry. You just do that. If that helps. But if you want to try painting it freehand and not use tape, that's good too. You want to try both ways, actually, if you can. Sometimes you might want to do it, sometimes not. So there we go, we have it. We'll set up here with our tape and look how good that's gonna look. You'll see when we lift up that tape. So you can go over the tape like that, it doesn't matter. Because once you have that tape on there, it's, it's gonna look great. Okay, so you paint over that. And then we just lift up the tape. And there we have it, a perfect level line across the painting. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take some of that turquoisey green and mix it in over here too with some of that blue and lighten it up a little bit and a little bit of orange maybe over here. And then we're going to take our brush again and we're going to take our brush really lightly and just go across here and then maybe leave some white waves in there. So you just leave a space for some white uh, white caps and uh, ocean waves coming in. And you put in some more blue. Like that. So you'd want to leave some of those white bits of paper. Like that. And a couple of just good bits like that. And that's fine. You have it. That is your ocean. Your distant horizon line of your ocean. You can blend in a few spots if you want. But you want to leave some of that white paper there, sparkling white paper. It gives you the feeling of the waves coming in and crashing in and the ocean spray kind of bubbling up here and there. That's really important you, to keep that, leave that there. Don't cover over, over everything with blue paint. Now we're going to do the sky and the sky is going to be equally fun. What we're going to do is we're going to take our brush and add some fresh clean water on the paper. So you're just going to take your brush with some fresh clean water and go over the top the top half of your sky. I wouldn't go all the way down with wet paper where the um, where the ocean is. I would just dampen the paper up top here. So the top half of this section here. So if you can imagine this is your top section of the sky area. Your top half. So from here up you dampen the paper just a little bit with some damp, fresh, clean water. And then what we'll do is we'll use the same colors here. And we'll just get in a nice sky wash like that. And you can make the darker areas up here, higher up in the sky. Like this. And it's good just to...
have fun with it. Don't get too worried about things. Use a little bit of this flesh tone color. That'll be fine. And you'll go along here, but not touching the ocean distant horizon, that, that blue line we made. We're going to keep our brush a little bit above that. So you don't want to touch that line we just painted, that dark blue line where the ocean is, the distant line. You just want to get a little bit of that flesh tone color, a little bit of gold, maybe some that that yellowish, like that, across the horizon line here. And then you can rinse off your brush, dry off the water, the excess water on a tissue, and then you can just gently blend in that wash. And if you see that it starts to flow back in there, you could just lift it up with a little bit of a tissue and blot it up. So what happened here is we we didn't let the blue paint dry enough. So if you could imagine, we'd want to leave this dry a little bit more. So we didn't leave this dry enough, this blue wash here. So that's where we would let this go. I'm going to just try to see if I can... I think I should be... Able... Yeah, that's good enough. All right, so for me, that's pretty good. Um, a little bit more blue here. Just to kind of blend that in like that. A little bit of clouds there. Sometimes you'll have to use a tissue to blot up some things. You can make some clouds with tissues too. You can take your tissue and ball it up like this and then you can spin it like this and make a cloud. But I think this is fine. <clears throat> Maybe I'll take a little bit of that um, that turquoise color and let's just get a little of that turquoise color here where the figures are. Like that. And maybe a little bit of that golden color too. Just a little bit of the golden color mixed in with that turquoise color. Just so it kind of, we get that feeling of warm and cool. So everything is kind of modulating between warm and cool colors and we don't get that sort of feeling of like bl just bland looking color that's just there's no mixtures to it or dynamics to it and it just you know so the more you can blend in some warm and cool colors into your mixes you're gonna have a better looking painting and then I'll do the same thing over here I'll use a little bit of that golden color in the distant ocean here where we painted this out here and then you can even go in and get a little bit of the darker washes here and take some more darker blue viridian green that that turquoisey green the blue maybe a touch of orange and then you can do a little bit of darker darks here. Just to sort of... kind of tie in the darker colors back here with these four, foreground colors here in the ocean, like that. So it doesn't look sort of isolated by itself with just like one dark line across here. So I did the same thing over here in this original painting in my book. I have the darker colors along the uh, horizon line of the ocean, the distant ocean horizon line. And then you can see I mixed in some lighter blues and greens and a little bit of gold and warm and cool colors, golds and blues, 
warms and cools and I lighten them up as they came forward into the foreground here where the figures are and I did the same thing here we might have did a little bit different look but it's pretty much similar very similar to what we did here okay so we have completed two gorgeous paintings I'm so glad you joined me here again please subscribe if you haven't before so that you can stay in contact with us here on my channel um, it's really a, a great um, uh, pleasure and uh, it's fun to work with everyone here we're having a fun time doing the extreme beginner series videos and uh, we're going to kind of get you up to speed so if you're just starting out you're at the right place at the right time if you're going to you should stick to this kind of format like we were just showing when you're practicing your drawing skills and if, if you have really good solid drawing skills that you might be bringing because you might have been drawing for a long time but you never tried watercolors you just know how to draw well well then maybe you're not not going to be uh, tracing as much but if you're kind of new to drawing and painting there's no reason why when you're first starting out get some sketches going with some tracing with some pencil drawings tracing with your clear um, we, we showed here how we use the clipboard the clear translucent plastic clear clipboard we showed that technique here and that method to get yourself some really good strong um, pencil drawings so that you can start working your washes onto those drawings and it really helps a lot you'll feel much more um, excited about watercolors you'll be creating some really beautiful paintings and you'll try out different colors and you'll be mixing and so you'll be more focused in the beginning on mixing your colors and having a fun time using the washes and the watercolor paint and getting used to that and then you're doing your 15 minutes every day 20 minutes every day if you can of drawing using just a pen or a pencil drawing anything you can anything you feel like you're inspired to draw um, I used to draw everything from I'd sometimes park my car and you know in a parking lot like um, at a donut shop or something or a coffee shop and I'll, I would draw a car or a building I'd get home I'd draw maybe like an apple an orange maybe a pair of scissors a tape dispenser I would draw one of my uh, rolls of tape I draw my palettes I would just draw anything and everything and I, I still do I draw a lot so I'm always working on my drawings now I'm drawing a lot uh, with uh, figures I'm trying to work with books that I have that have figure paintings in there and portrait paintings and I'm trying to do those type of drawings now so but in, at every level that you're working with watercolor drawing is a very very important part so try to get in your 15 minutes every day and you'll be surprised uh, you know six months to a year goes by and you're you're doing your drawings 15 minutes a day you're gonna see incredible improvements so um, don't uh, uh, worry about it just put in a little bit of time each day and I know sometimes you know you can't do it every day but if you get busy that's no problem but you try to keep it to uh, daily if you can okay and you can even check it off in a calendar or you keep a checklist uh, you know of like a sheet of paper and you just write down Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday and then you just put a check mark next to each day that you've did a little bit of sketching and then you'll start to see that as you're doing it on a consistent basis over a month or two then you'll just do it all the time it'll just be automatic you won't even have to really worry about it and think about it you will just automatically pick up your pencil and pen and start drawing and sketching each day for 10 15 minutes so but in the beginning the first couple weeks of the first month you have to focus intensely on making sure you get in that 15 minutes a day and that sets up yourself because after about 15 to 20 days it becomes a habit and then you'll just do it automatically you won't even like again you won't have to think about it you'll just do it because habits are formed in between 14 and 15 to 20 days so if you do something straight 15 days to 20 days it becomes a habit and you'll just do it automatically all right so enough of the um chatting about sketching i know you're going to do it you're going to do your 15 minutes and uh we'll see you on the next video i'm glad you're here again we're going to have a fun time on the extreme beginners videos uh, as we go forward we'll do more like this where we're going to cover the sketching uh with our um tracing techniques that we do so this way you can have a really good uh, time of it okay all right we'll see you on the next video